Well, it's been a while since uh, I've done a video. It's been an awful lot going on in my world. Um, you join me here on the River Severn. It's July, it's boiling hot. Uh, I did a couple of sessions last week and I had a double figure zander on each of those occasions. So I thought it might be interesting to bring you along, uh, show you what I'm doing, uh, some of the rigs, etc. And uh, hopefully we can replicate some of those results. We're in July, so it's early season, it's boiling hot. I uh, don't often do a lot of fishing at this time of the year, July, August. Once the tench have spawned, typically I will take a bit of a break. I tend to fish for specimen fish and July, August aren't the best. Uh, and uh, I usually give it a little, little rest until the water starts to cool down sort of around the September, October and then I'll go hard at it again. Um, but this sand fishing has been brilliant, really enjoyed it. They are fighting really, really hard. Um, plenty of bites and I am catching a few big ones as well. So we're going to show you what I've been doing, um, some of the rigs. Hopefully we can replicate those results. Uh, I am mostly going to be fishing from boat. Certainly the rigs I'm using are applicable to both boat and bank. Uh, and a lot of what I'm doing, uh, it'll take a little bit more effort, but you can replicate on the bank simply by um, jumping from, from swim to swim. Um, but uh, let's see how we get on uh, and we'll take it from there. Okay, haven't even got the second rod out. Not a monster by any means. But uh, a reasonable start. I don't think it's a big fish. I think it's kind of a feisty small one. Doesn't like that sunlight. Looks like smaller, probably around seven. Let's get a look. Yeah, maybe not even that big. Big fish. You're gonna have made a mess of my trace, mister. Right, so I recorded this on my own, um, but the audio was terrible. So Edgar's on the camera now, and I'm gonna run you through the, the two rigs that I'm using. There's one float rig that I primarily use during the day, and then there's a, a bottom rig that um, I'm using at night. So we'll start off with the float rig. We start off with, come in closer, Edgar. We start off with a wire trace that's tied onto a supple 20 pound wire. Uh, I tie that with a knotless knot. Um, these supple wires are quite difficult to cinch down so the knotless knot is a lot easier. Um, and that's tied with a fairly fine wire treble. Um, depending on the size of the bait you're using, anywhere from around a size four to a size eight, so four, six or eight to match the bait that you're using. 
I tend to use a fairly long trace, a bit longer than you might normally, um, because you will find that the last inch or two on some of the, the zander you catch gets, uh, gets a bit kinky. So rather than having to replace the whole trace, um, you can cut off the kinky bit, and then because it is a knotless knot, it's very easy then to put another, um, another treble on there, and you can often get three or four different traces out of the one um, little bit of leader material. Now then, that goes up. a loop and it's very important that this is a small loop I'll explain that shortly when we uh, attach a fish and that loop is attached to a snap link swivel and a buffer bead and then we've got a running lead set up um, now we're in the summer here there's not much flow so uh, we're, we're happy using a two ounce lead obviously as um, as the river gets a, a bit angrier then you'll need to up that lead and then at some point the river will get too much to be using the float and you'll be using um, just straight running leads I like to use these gardener running leads. They're clever things. Is that the Severn is a, a snaggy river. There's a, a lot of sunken branches and trees. And these ones, if you can see, they've got a little they've got a little plastic clip there. Uh, you put your lead into that, you pull the sleeve down over it, and then if the lead were to get stuck on anything, then that little plastic um, hook that opens up, you lose your lead, but you get everything else back, including of course a baited treble, which you definitely don't want to be leaving in. This rod is set up on mono, uh, the reason being the type of the float we're using, so that can be anything from about a 12 to um, 18 pounds, which is going to pause there, we're going to let this boat go by. Right, we just had to let that boat go by, so um, I think we're at the mono. Um, I use a mono on the float rod because the float needs to be able to slide up on, on the mono. Um, anything from around 12 to, to 18 pounds is fine. That goes to a lock slide float, um, and these are really, really good on the 7 because we're moving swims regularly and the depth really does vary. We can be in um, uh, 8 foot on one swim and we can be in 17, 18 foot in the next swim. Um, and this means we don't have to mess about setting the depth, it, it will set itself. So the way they work, when um, the line is slack, if I give you some slack, they'll slide up the line, so they go in the water, they slide up the line, and then when you tighten down, they lock, and then obviously they're super sensitive and you'll be able to tell the bites. Um, these are much easier to hook the fish on. The fish tend to not drop the bait on these, so the float will go, uh, and uh, if for whatever reason you're not striking it immediately, which you certainly should be, but if you don't, then they tend to hang on long enough for you to be able to pick the rod up. Whereas when you're fishing quiver tip style with uh, heavier rods, you've got to be fairly quick, otherwise those ander will drop drop the um, the baits. Um, that's just through to a, um, a two and a half, two and three quarter pound rod. Uh, like to use a heavier rod if I can. The fish are fighting really hard. You don't want to be undergunned. Um, and the advantage of using the floats is that you can use a heavier rod because you're not relying on the on the rod tip for uh, for indication. Um, and then just a bait runner rod, uh, bait runner reel. Uh, and as I say, you got that nice heavy mono there. So that's the float rod. Pretty simple. Right. So that was a float rod. Let me show you the um, the running lead rod. This is the rod that I primarily use at night. So the trace is exactly the same, um, size 4 to 8 treble, tied knotless knot, onto a, um, a knotable wire trace. That's got a very small loop at the top of the trace, which will become apparent why in a moment. Again, we're uh, attached to a snap link swivel, buffer bead, and we've got the exact same running lead arrangement on one of those gardener um, leads with the, with the C-clip so that we can drop it should, uh, should it get snagged. The difference on this one, obviously we've got no float, so above the trace we've actually got um, two, three foot of very heavy fluorocarbon. Um, this one is um, 25 pounds. The reason, well there's a few reasons why we're using that, because the main line is braid. So obviously if a fish was to wrap around in the braid, it can act like cheese wire, cut the fish, split fins, um, lift up scales, so this protects the fish. Um, it's also far more abrasion resistant than the braid. And as I said, the, um, the seven, is pretty um, snaggy, there's all sorts that gets washed down. Uh, and it's heavier as well, so the braid is a floating braid on purpose, so that it's not sinking down into the, sa into the snags. But obviously we want a few feet above the bait to be, um, to be pinned to the lake bed. And being a 25 pound fluorocarbon, it is very heavy, um, so that will sag down and, uh, and keep things a little bit uh, more inconspicuous. 
The braid itself is, is around £55. That may sound like an awful lot, um, but you're really going to do yourself no favours whatsoever going any lighter. And having heavier braid means that um, if you were to get snagged up, uh, we can open up those, uh, those uh, low diameter thin, thin wire trebles and make sure that we get everything back. And uh, equally, we can make sure that we're not too overgunned by any fish. Now the rods are slightly different on the bottom um, bottom bait. Um, they're slightly uh, lighter rod because obviously we're looking for um, the indication on the rod tip, and we don't want the fish to feel that and drop the bait. Um, so I started off actually last week with about a pound and three quarter. I was getting beat up a little bit by the bigger fish. Um, so these are two pound test curve rods. Uh, we've got another boat coming, but he's going slow, so we're going to we're going to see if we can. Um, we can get through this. If you hold that still again, I'm just going to spin this rod around and show you the bite indication on the top. Put this behind you. So as you may hear, we've got a bell on here and uh, this works really well at night. So I am watching the rods, but even the most well-intentioned person, occasionally you do look away um, and you've got to be quick on getting these bites. So obviously the bell means you hear those and they're very visual as well, these ones. Um, so with just a little bit of um, background light or um, I've got uh, a light in the boat, they stand out and ideally you want to use these ones that clip around the rod, they are not coming off. Um, the ones where you um, kind of paper, uh, what would you call it, like the, the clips where you squeeze them on, they come off. Um, so these ones are really good. Once on, they're never coming off. What you may want to do, they are cheap and you get loads of them in a packet, you may want to glue them on top and bottom because otherwise you do tend to find the bells ping off or the springs come off but uh, they're really handy. If you pop that down I'll get the rod down. Right, so that's both setups, no rocket science, all very very simple. I think now we should go off and uh, egg us fishing today and uh, we should see if we can try and catch a couple of Xander. He's got uh, football all day tomorrow, so we don't want to be here too long. Let's uh, go off and try and catch some fish. And turn around behind us. Right, that'll do, okay. show you how um, we load these fish onto the trace. Um, so the first thing you're going to need is one of these uh, long baiting needles. You either want a catch gate needle like this or one with a crook. What you don't want is a needle point otherwise you're going to end up uh, stabbing yourself and you'll see why in a moment. Um, so in this case we've got a roach, it's a fairly small one, about three and a half inches, something like that. Um, we're going to take our index finger and we're going to put it um, uh, along one side of the towel, right in the root of the towel. Turn the fish over, take our needle with the, gatch, uh, the latch gate open and through the door, the, um, uh, the vertebrae and all the muscles there, we're going to push the needle and then that's going to stop on our finger and that will also not pop through the skin there. Twist it over, we're going to run it along the, um, the vertebrae uh, just above the lateral line there and uh, the important thing here is where we pop out and the line that we pop out. This is a fairly small fish, so we've got to allow for the space for both the hook and the hook shank, and then we want a little bit of trace there as well. So we're not gonna to wanna to come out much further than in line with the bottom of the dorsal. Obviously, if it's a bigger fish, you could go a bit further. Uh, and you can equally do this uh, with a half a fish um, with the tail ends um, and uh, indeed with, uh, with the head ends you just go through both sides of the fish and then uh, along like, uh, like we have done under the skin here. So bend the fish uh, a little bit harder when they're frozen uh, but uh, we can bend the fish, we can pop the, the trace out where we want it and then we're going to take our trace and then that small uh, figure eight loop that we tied earlier. We're going to pop that over either the crook or into the, um, the latch gate. Turn this 180 degrees and then we'll find that that catches less. It runs much smoother through the fish. We pull that through the body of the fish. Take that off. Pull the trace all the way through. And uh, we're just going to pause a second as this boat goes by. 
just had to let a boat go by. Unfortunately, it's a um, it's a Sunday afternoon and uh, it's a it's a nice day. So obviously, uh, it's quite busy. So uh, so yeah, we pulled it through. We've got our treble here. It's a semi barbless treble. So I've I've um, squashed down two of the trebles, uh, two of the barbs. There's one barb here. Obviously, the uh, the barb that's intact. That's the barb that's going to go into the fish. Now the important thing is is that the hook is going to be placed in the same line as. Uh, the, the trace is going to be pulling down through the fish. What we don't want to do is hook, for example, the, the fish up here because then if we strike you can see that we're not pulling the, the uh, points into the fish. They're kind of being pulled across the fish. So we want to be anywhere on the line here and then depending on the size of the fish that could be um, just behind the gills or you may even want to put it into the skull here. This one we're going to put uh, just behind the gills here pop in like that, tighten it down, I'm trying to do it upside down so I can show you, there we go, tighten it down and then that's nice and conspicuous uh, and then you've also got those two hook points there uh, proud and, and ready to hook the fish but uh, uh, it's, it's a lot more subtle than a lot of the um, the presentations that I do see out there. So it's as easy as that and then obviously you just clip that onto your um, onto your um, quick link and uh, get yourself a stander. Here it comes. There it is. Oh it's a me it's a perfect it's medium. Got it Edgar got it. Oh that was well worth it. So it's the perfect size. It's not big, it's not tiny. It looks like a it looks like a pipe. Yeah, they're kind of some people call them pipe perch. They're not a mix, but some people call them pipe perch. Pipe. Ah, that's good. I was really worried we weren't going to get one because it, it, it's just never that quiet. Right, do you want to see how I unhook them? Once I've got it, it won't splash so much. It might splash until I've got it in. Not a lot, he's fine. What? Not a lot, he's fine. Do you, want to, do, you want to, do you want to see his teeth, look? Can you see them? Yeah. And, and then he's got really sharp gripping teeth here as well. He's hooked deep, but because we've got those barbless hooks, once I grab it, it should be fairly easy. See the flies getting around my face. So that he's not big, but he's not tiny. So you can definitely catch a bigger one than that. <sighs> Will you get away from me, you dirty flies? There it is. It's a good one, Edgar. It's a good one. This is this is your one. There you go. Stop. Well done, bud. There's a bigger one. Brilliant. Oh, it's a big one. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop. <coughs> Got it. It's long, isn't it? another very quick bite. I uh, chest cast out. 
sorting out the hook link on the second rod and uh, this one wrapped around absolutely engulfed the bait as well, I really wanted it. Not a big fish but uh, off the mark today, it's trouble fishing in the days, I tend to get the smaller stamp fish but uh, let's get back. She's in. <laughs> well, as you can see, after getting that very quick fish, it's taken me uh, quite a while to get the next bite, but uh, it's another double, just. But this fish is on absolute steroids and uh, Wrung me a little bit ragged. Oh, careful. And uh, I did think it was uh, potentially going to be a bit bigger. But uh, nice way to finish tonight. I've hung on a little bit later than perhaps I should. Um, as I say, the, uh, the bite slowed off. So uh, we'll get this one back and uh, start heading home. Yeah, maybe eight pounds. That's a better one. In you go. Oh. Don't they fight hard at this time of the year? I'm not a monster, but a much better fish. And what a beautiful fish those end are. Right, let's get that sorted. In you go. Oh, brilliant. Literally just put the 11.2 in the Queenford to make sure it's um, recovered before I do some photographs. And before I've had a chance to do that, we've had another one here. I don't think it's quite as big. But uh, it may Trouble, double figures. Might be just short. We'll have a look. Once I've dried my face. <laughs> so that was a mad few minutes. I had that good fish and I popped her in the Queenford to 
get a breath back before I did some photographs because uh, she put up a really good fight and before I had a chance to do that this one popped up it's a little bit smaller that one so let's get that one out and show you get it back and then we'll get the other one out right so as often happens in fishing it was a mad few moments I, uh, I had a good fish and uh, while that was recovering the other rod went and uh, and this was the result this one's the smaller of the two nine pounds seven so uh, we're going to get this one back and uh, we'll get the other one out now she's at a rest and we'll show you her as well this is the first one bigger one of the two it's a uh, third double I've had in the last few days and uh, this one's the biggest of them so far and weighs in at 11 pound to just about get her in frame there for you it's really quite warm she put up a big fight so uh, I'm not going to keep her out of the water long we'll get a couple of photographs and, uh, and then we're going to let her back but it's a really stunning condition for the time of the year. I think these mild summers are, uh, are going to produce some big weights. Xander, Chubb, Barbel. It's going to be interesting. There's a net spark short of 21 pound of Xander there. Unfortunately, it's two fish. Well that's it for uh, the summer zander fishing, for this year at least. I think it's definitely something that I'm going to be doing again. It's been a lot of fun. Um, we caught a lot of fish. I think we maybe done 10, a dozen, something like that, maybe a few more, maybe a few less evening afternoon sessions over these several weeks. Um, and we've caught uh, up, to, up to maybe around 100 fish. Uh, a lot of them have been fairly small, so on average uh, around four to seven pounds. Um, although they've been good sport to be honest. Um, and we've had a, a few bigger fish including some doubles as well um, but even though smaller fish have been fighting really really hard um, I've, I've learnt a lot doing this over these um, these last few weeks the only zander fishing I've done on the river before had been a couple of winters ago we did a few weeks then um, and obviously catching a lot more fish um, over the summer um, their float fishing has been really interesting uh, the only reason initially that uh, I started using the float was I was bringing my lad, the cameraman, who's who's behind the camera right now, and uh, I thought the float would be a little bit more interesting to watch and uh, easier to, to hit the bites on um, because on the rod tips they can be they can be quite tricky. You've got to be quick. Um, and to be honest, it's been a bit of a, a revelation. Um, the bites are much much easier to hit. Uh, you're catching a lot more fish and if I were hanging on and, and going to continue doing this for any period of time I think I would definitely be modifying my floats and using those at night as well so initially I was using one float during the day and um, uh, touch ledgering on the other rod and it wasn't long before I switched to both floats uh, both rods on the float um, they really were that good um, we haven't had a blank yet saying that we haven't caught one so far today we've only been here a few hours um, what I have noticed over a fairly small sample size is um, when there's been a little bit of rain, certainly in the summer, it's very different in the summer, the levels have been varying just by a few inches. Uh, a couple of winters ago when I was fishing, 
that were varying by multiple feet, um, up to 10, 15 feet um, at one point. Um, but what I've noticed here in the summer, certainly this year, is um, that first 24 hours or so after rain, the fishing becomes very, very slow. But then maybe 48 hours or so after, that's perhaps when I've been having the best fishing. As I said, it's been a fairly small sample size, so any of you boys out there that are out on the seven um, regularly, be interesting to know if that tallies with, um, with what you've been finding. Um, we've come here today and it has been raining this morning um, and uh, we've been here a couple of hours and we haven't had anything at all. We're going to stick it out for maybe another hour or so, so um, it, it would obviously be disappointing to, to finish on a blank, but uh, we've had a lot of fun um, no matter what happens anyway. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I haven't done any videos for a, a little while. Um, if it's uh, something perhaps you want to see more of or if you've got any suggestions, let us know. Do drop us a like um, and uh, maybe we'll see you next time. Say goodbye, Edgar. See ya. Oh, that's a bad one.